Well, it looks like BLM has been living large. Yes, sir, indeed. This according to foxnews.com. This is an article by John Brown. came out yesterday. And I'll read you the comments below the article. BLM transferred millions to Canadian charity to buy mansion, formerly owned by Communist Party. The purchase comes as BLM faces internal turmoil. Black Lives Matter, also known as BLM, moved millions of dollars to a charity in Canada run by the wife of co-founder Patrice Kahn Colliers to purchase a mansion that used to be the headquarters of the Communist Party of Canada. This according to public records reviewed by the New York Post. I'm thinking this organization was shady from the word go. I'm sorry, but looting, riding, and burning down a city is not the best way to get out your message. Buying mansions in Georgia and Los Angeles, as they mentioned here, is not the best way to say that you support minority communities against brutality by police. M4BJ, which is, oh, that sounds a little, uh, a little risque there. M4BJ, which is a nonprofit based in Toronto that was set up in part by Janiah Khan, bought the 10,000 square foot mansion for 6.3 million in July 2021. Let me repeat that, 6.3 million. Don't you think that 6.3 million should have gone to these minority communities if you truly believe in healing this relationship between minorities and police? Khan is the wife of Khan Colliers, a self-professed Marxist who helped found Black Lives Matter Global Foundation Network. Now, folks, if you see an organization with a title that long, you know it's suspect. It just is. I'm sorry, but that always seems to be the case. Whenever it has a title that long, you know there's something not right about that organization. And, of course, they have a picture here of Patrice Colliers, who participated, as it says, in the peaceful march in Hollywood, California, on Sunday, June 7th, 2020. Wasn't that when they were looting, rioting, and burning down Rodeo Drive? Last year, Con Colliers resigned from the organization after investigation revealed that she spent $3.2 million on homes in Georgia and Los Angeles. She reportedly denied that the homes were purchased with donations to BLM. Uh Uh-huh. The purchase of the Toronto mansion, which is also called Wild Seed Center for Art and Activism, drew criticism from within the organization. Quote, for BLM Canada to take money from the BLM Global Network Foundation for a building without consulting the community was unethical. Canadian BLM activist Sarah Jama and Sarah Saudi recently said, quote, for BLM Canada to refuse to answer questions from young black organizers goes against the spirit of movement building. Well, I think your movement was built on the line. That's what I think. According to a recent investigation by the Washington Examiner, two activists who were supposed to assume leadership after Con Collier's resignation left abruptly in September. I wonder why. They have a title of another article here. Who controls Black Lives Matter's $60 million war chest? I might do a video about that in the future. Goyer stepped down from her role as executive director of the activist group Central Foundation last year amid questions about her finances. Colliers was questioned intensely on a series of real estate investments and property purchases leading to criticism for her perceived opulence while claiming to be a Marxist. After Colliers resigned, BLM told the media that the two new leaders would hold co-executive positions of leadership moving forward, which never happened. Yeah, because they each wanted to be uh, the big man in charge. Quote, although a media advisory was released indicating that we were tapped to play the role of senior co-executives at BLMGNF, we were not able to come to an agreement with the acting leadership council about the scope of our work and authority. Wrote Makani Themba, can we please get some normal names here? One of the announced executives who never assumed office. The statement alleged to also represent Manifa Bandel, the other proposed BLM senior executive. As a result, we did not have the opportunity to serve in this capacity. We wanted to be sure to inform our community of this fact as we move on to serve our movement in other ways, Thimba wrote. BLM did not immediately respond to Fox News' request for comment. I wonder why. So here are what people saying about BLM. BLM's handling of their funds is akin to the politicians' use of campaign fund accounts and the many charitable foundations formed to employ family, friends, and staff. 
No one ever investigates the intake or expenditures. Somebody replied, or like Obama in 2008, where he agreed with John McCain that they would do campaign reform and limit donations. Then Obama breaks his word when his campaign advisors tell him that he can take in tens of millions, possibly hundreds of millions, by accepting debit cards and certain money orders, etc., etc. Someone asked, did they buy it with Best Buy, Apple, and Amazon gift cards? I love that one. That's funny. No, they bought it with the proceeds of their smash and grab arm of the BLM. Quote, I am afraid that there is a certain class of race problem solvers who don't want the patient to get well. You've probably heard this before. Because as long as the disease holds out, they have not only an easy means of making a living, but also an easy medium through which to make themselves prominent before the public. Booker T. Washington. Somebody replied, never more true than today. Someone needs to tell Colliers that this is not Africa, and it will never be Africa, no more than it will be Italy, Spain, or Russia. IRS can audit and can revoke nonprofit status. This is the right in their wheelhouse in terms of value per audit. Somebody replied back, but IRS is too busy chasing every $600 transaction, every middle American bank account true. Why is IRS not auditing BLM, the directors and officers, or Pelosi, or Biden, or Soros, or Frouchy? So those are some of the comments on foxnews.com regarding this article. Once again, this is by John Brown. This came out yesterday. Title of the article again. BLM transferred millions to Canadian charity to buy a mansion formerly owned by Communist Party. This is the Culture Confederacy. If you like the video, please click that like button, subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram at hashtag Jason Composes. Leave comments below. Now you can reach me at Twitter, Culture Confederacy at Twitter. So what do you think? Do you think BLM is in a lot of hot water here? Do you think that uh, they are legit? Do you think that they start out as a legitimate organization and they just lost their way? Or do you think it's always been somewhat of a suspect uh, organization that really had, uh, really didn't have this idea of helping minorities in mind. It was just to line their back pocket, so to speak. So this is the Cultural Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country, and I'll catch you next time. Y'all have a great Sunday.